Greetings everyone and welcome once again to another Baptist Bread Daily Devotional. And today is Sunday, December 15th. And it is still the year 2019 for another couple weeks. And then we'll be going into 2020. Amen. So, today's topic is titled, Persistence in Service. And the author for today is, the initials are D.O. That is short for uh, Don Oam, pastor of Lighthouse Baptist Church in Orlando, Florida. Alright, so let's get started on the topic of persistence in service. And uh, verses from 1 Thessalonians 3.13 says, But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. So we shouldn't be wearying and well-doing. Amen. Alright, so as we start in today's devotion on persistence and service, uh, he, uh, Brother Don says here, Time does fly in the service of the Lord. It sure does. This year is rocketing down the mountainside of time. It sure is. How thankful we are for everyone who faithfully serves the Lord. Praise the Lord, and we should be thankful for all of those that faithfully serve the Lord by going out and being bold witnesses, both near and afar, those on the mission field. Uh, so we should be thankful for them and their service in getting the gospel out and telling people about Jesus and all that stuff. Amen? All right, so continuing on, we are thankful for your persistence in the ministry it is a costly investment, <laughs> no question about about it, but the d uh, dividends are so much greater than the outlay. Right. You will forget the price when on a mission field, human nature can be one daunting obstacle tempting one to give up. That's the truth. <laughs> so uh, we should be praying for those that they don't give up because you get on the mission field and there might not be any other people around you that are believers to fellowship with and you might get discouraged and want to give up but you got to keep going and eventually uh, you will find other believers to fellowship with and get uh, people to come to Jesus and then uh, so we should be praying for those that are out on the mission field and pray that the Lord will continue to guide them and direct them and that they won't uh, be tempted to give up amen so again, he says, when on, the, on a mission field, human nature can be one daunting obstacle, tempting one to give up. Uh, we can all bring to mind experiences with those few people who major, uh, whose major role in life is to encourage others to throw in the towel. So let's not be one of those people that uh, try to tell somebody to throw in the towel because... Just because you might not be uh, doing what somebody else is doing and you try to incur or discourage them from uh, going on the mission field just because uh, you're not able to, you should be encouraging them. I know that we uh, have to prepare and get ready and, and uh, raise support and all that stuff and have to be prepared for all that, but you shouldn't be somebody that goes and goes around and saying, hey, you shouldn't go out there. You shouldn't go tell people about Jesus out there. Stay here. Stay here. Just do whatever. Just, uh, you know, how are you going to, you know, support yourself? How are you going to do this? Well, you got a plan, yeah. you got a plan, but you can't be one of those that uh, that uh, encourages others to throw in the towel because we shouldn't be like that. Amen? So we should encourage people to keep going and to support them. Amen? Instead of discouraging them. So <clears throat> let's not be one of those people. And hope you're not one of those people watching this video right now. Alright, so he says here, uh, he says, Recently I spoke with a missionary who arrived on his field of calling over 30 years ago. As we spoke, he recalled his experience of missions. For the first three years, he and another missionary daily visited their community and eventually passed out over one million tracts. Yet, in those three fledging uh, years, not one response, nor one decision for Christ occurred. That is persistence in the face of silence. Now, thirty-some years later, his efforts are being rewarded. 
souls are coming to Christ and li lives are being changed by the gospel. Amen. Many of us have gone through the long, lonely hours away from the applause or even the awareness of the public. Nevertheless, you are serving and witnessing for the glory of God. Right, so let us remember that it's for the glory of God. It is not a waste. No, it's not. So if somebody tells you it's a waste of time to go to a certain area, saying, well, I wouldn't go there. Well, then don't go there. Let me go there. Let that other person go there. If you don't want to go there, don't try to discourage somebody from going there that wants to go there. Like, say, if you want to go to Guyana or if you want to go to the Philippines or if you want to go to Germany or if you want to go to London or wherever you want to go start a mission work, don't, don't be that one that tells them saying, well, I wouldn't go there and you shouldn't go there either because it's too hot. I wouldn't go where somewhere it's too hot. But what if and then you discourage the other person from from going there because you think it's too hot and you would rather be someplace that's really cold? Well, then go to that cold place up there. Go to Antarctica or or uh, Minnesota or wherever you 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 want to go. But don't uh, try to discourage somebody from going to some place where where their heart is being. Uh, uh, directed by the Lord, so, um, so don't, don't be a discouragement to somebody, so just because you don't want to go to that certain place, don't be telling somebody, well, why would you want to go there? It's so hot, it's so muggy, it's so rainy, it's so blah, 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 well, if you don't want to go out in the middle of the jungle, then don't go, if you don't want to go out into the middle of the, the darkest, deepest, uh, Wherever, then don't go there. If you don't want to live among those people, then don't go there. Let somebody else go there and, and do that, and then you go someplace else. And don't, uh, don't try to discourage people from going someplace certain where the Lord might be directing them. And then all of a sudden you were a discouragement, and then later on, you know, they could have been, they could have been a, you know, done a great, you know, mission work there by telling people about Jesus, and then you just prevented them from not going because you you know, said, well, I wouldn't go there, and you shouldn't go there either, so <laughs> we shouldn't be like that, we should be like, oh yeah, well, you know, make sure you do it the right way, you know, make sure you go and get the support you need, and pray, and, you know, and, and, uh, be an encouragement to somebody that wants to go to a certain place, and be a missionary in a certain area, and you can even be a missionary in your own town, or in your own neighborhood, amen, so let's be an encouragement, and Say, if that's, if that's where you want to go and that's where you feel like the Lord's uh, directing you to go, then, then go do it and uh, go try to get the support and the help that you need. Amen? Instead of being like, well, you shouldn't go out there <laughs> because, you know, what, how are you going to support yourself? I mean, I'm not going to support you. Well, then don't support me. <laughs> you know, go support somebody else then. I mean, you know, it, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't, be late, shouldn't be like that. So if you're somebody that's like that trying to, discourage somebody from going someplace certain well be an encouragement say yes i'll be praying for you and if the lord wants you to go out there and be a missionary then i'll pray for you and i'll try to support you as best i can and you know and hope and pray that you are able to get out there amen so amen all right so let's be an encouragement to one another not a discouragement just because you might not want to go to a certain place and that other person wants to go there and uh and be a missionary there and tell people about Jesus there. Um, so let's encourage them to go. Amen? All right. So, again, many of us have gone through the long, lonely hours away from the applause or even the awareness of the public. Nevertheless, you are serving and witnessing for the glory of God. It is not a waste. Right. Thank you for your persistence. Be encouraged. Amen. So I encourage you, if you're, if the Lord's telling you, uh, you know, directing you to go somewhere certain, whether it be Guyana or Trinidad or uh, Moldova or um, uh, Ecuador, wherever, wherever you're, uh, wherever the Lord may be directing you, if you're uh, being uh, uh, called to that certain area, then then go and get the support you need and and uh pray about it and i won't i won't stop you <laughs> that's where you want to go that's where you want to be and you shouldn't stop me either so and i'm not gonna let you stop me because uh if uh, the lord wants me to go out there then i'm gonna go so amen 
So, praise the Lord. So, if you're somebody that's trying to discourage somebody from going somewhere certain because you wouldn't go there or you'd say, well, it's too expensive, it's too this, it's too that. Well, God can provide, amen, and God does provide. So, we should trust the Lord and have faith in Him and don't let any man or woman or anybody discourage you. But go to those that will encourage you to go and, and uh, amen. All right, so that was uh, the end of our topic on persistence in service. So wherever you're being directed or guided to, if it's in your own town or your own neighborhood, going and talking to your neighbor, then go do it. Tell somebody about Jesus today, whether it be near or far. Amen, because anywhere you go is a mission field, even in your own town, in your own city, in your own uh, uh, community. Amen. All right. So, now that we're done with that, let's encourage one another to keep going, keep telling people about Jesus. Amen. And pray for those on the mission field. Pray that they'll continue to get the support that they need. And if you're able to help and support them in any type of way, whether it be uh, supporting them with uh, uh, money to help them get the um, supplies they need, or if you're able to supply something certain to them, or even just praying that they... Uh, be encouraged and keep going. You know, even your your prayers help. Amen. So, uh, do what you need to do. Amen for the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. So, Revelation chapter 7 is where we're going to be at today for the Bible reading. So, if you'll turn with me to Revelation chapter 7. All right. So, let's see. Uh, make sure here. All right. Chapter 7 and verse 1 says... And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, uh, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. You hear that? That's the tribes of the children of Israel. So, um, that's Israel that, uh, that are being given the seal, amen. Of the tribe of Judah, there uh, of Judah were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Neph uh, Neph Nephthalim, uh were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Manasses were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Zebulon were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed twelve thousand. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, or of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about uh, the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, not not worshipped the man, but worshipped God, amen, saying, Amen, <laughs> blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power, and might be unto our God for ever and ever, amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these, th uh, these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said uh, to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. 
therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, uh, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb, which it is, shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Amen. So, that is Revelation chapter 7 for the reading. And we just got done talking about persistence in service. So, keep being persistent in the ministry. Amen. And uh, we thank you for your persistence. So be encouraged. And let's go and encourage others. And pray for those on the mission field, both near and far. Amen. All right. So that will be the end of today's devotional and Bible reading. So if you have not put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, today is the day to do so. That is the first thing you need to do. And he will save your soul. And then afterwards, he will show you how to live a Christ-like life while you're on this earth and what to do and what not to do and how not to uh, keep letting the flesh rule over you but let the spirit rule over you once you're saved. Amen. So, hope that's an encouragement to you. And so I'll be wrapping it up and tomorrow's topic will be titled Follow Me. Follow Me. Amen. And uh, we should follow the Lord. All right, so, and then the Bible reading will be from Revelation chapter 8. So I hope you'll join me tomorrow for that. Until next time, this is Brother Scott signing off. May the Lord richly bless you, and you all have a great and wonderful rest of your Sunday. Amen.